at the cutting edge of positive change and also the resistance to negative change. Good leadership is not always about being an agent of change. It is also about being an agent of conservation and having the wisdom to know when to be either. The university needs to grow and we will. We will develop a national and international strategy to secure additional federal funds, work with foundations, corporations, and local businesses to acquire the funds that will expand our programs, build the next group of facilities, create new centers of excellence and studies grounded in our region's experience and needs, and provide scholarships for students who see college as just beyond their grasp. The university will continue to use technology in its administrative and financial functions, but will become an innovator in the application of technology to public and then to technology in the classroom, research in fields previously thought to be out of our reach, and the development of distance education and online coursework that we have been talking about for years. We will become more data-driven in the evaluation of our work and the assessment of our students and be able to formulate measurable benchmarks to plan our goals and objectives. The university will become academically competitive with institutions attracting students and doing business in our region right under our nose, collaborate with other institutions, renew our re regional connections through strong partnerships with the surrounding community colleges. We will work with universities in foreign countries as well as the mainland U.S. to forge partnerships for professional schools a little beyond our reach at this time, such as engineering, law, and medicine, and we will reinvigorate our graduate programs. The university will take a responsible course in the face of the military buildup. We will take advantage of the opportunities to work with new corporate partners, look at persons in uniforms not just as warriors, but as potential tritons, potential students as well. We will do our part to prepare a cadre of professionals in environmental science, nursing, entrepreneurship, accountants, teachers, who will all be needed to respond to changes that our island will experience. But we're also going to examine the nature of those changes and debate the wisdom of certain courses of action. The university and its obligation to search for truth will take us down the path of debate, discussion, and evaluation, as well as responding and a combination to major changes on the horizon. The university will match student services with student characteristics and needs. We have a mature student body who have specific career goals and who must frequently juggle work requirements, family obligations, and education in a way that sometimes satis frustrate their own uh, educational aspirations. The university will recruit as early as elementary school, both public and private and we will make the university not the second choice or the third choice, but the first choice of our young people. <laughs> After a while, it will just seem natural. UOG must become the natural choice for higher education in Guam and the entire region. But before we do this, we must face some immediate challenges. Next year in March, we will welcome the accreditation team as WAS conducts its educational effectiveness visit. Because of the work of all the partners here in the university and the leadership of the administrative team, we will be ready. This year, we have to go through the budget process, and we're scheduled for a hearing on June 18th. Fortunately, the governor and several members of the legislature are here this morning, and if they could just come to an agreement on our base budget, and growth initiatives, we could all leave the field house with an extra bounce in our step. <laughs> you know, I've made a number of shifts in my personal life. Sometimes I turn left, sometimes I turn right, and now I've made the biggest U-turn in my life. I was in academia for a long time, and then I went into politics, and now I'm back. And people sometimes ask me, what's the difference between politics and academia? And I tell them, in politics, it's dog-eat-dog, -dog, and in academia, it's the other way around. 
There's a lot of politics here. For all of you who have never experienced academic politics, there's a lot of politics here, believe me. <laughs> Public life can be a harsh teacher. You can get blamed for things you have nothing to do with, and you can also get credit for things you just bump into. But you do learn how to call people up and ask for money. <laughs> this is one of those transferable skills I will use in academia. <laughs> but for an even higher purpose. Politics can be fun because you really can live a life larger than life really is at an individual level. It can be deceptive and it can be grueling, but there's a one advantage to being a politician that I really enjoyed, was being called honorable. Now, for most of my life, I was in an honorable profession called teaching, but I was never called honorable until I got to Washington, D.C., that I was finally referred to as honorable. But now that I'm no longer in office, I have been was introduced recently at a high school as the formerly honorable Robert Underwood. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but at heart, my heart, I'm a teacher. I come from a line of teachers. My parents were teachers, and most of my role models in life are teachers. I think like a teacher, but I know how to ask questions like a student. Sometimes it can be bothersome to others, but the habit of inquiry is hard to break, and I hope that I remain addicted to the pursuit of knowledge. Even in Congress, I thought of myself as a teacher, except that now I had a new group of students. They were called members of Congress, and some, like my old group of students, they suffered from attention deficit, didn't do their homework, and showed up to class late. In Chamorro, it is common to say tautauhu or estudianteku when referring to students. Literally, you are saying my people or my students. But my mother always referred to them as disipuluhu, my disciples. There was always something unique about how my mother thought about teaching. She had disciples, not in a religious sense, but in the educational sense. We were all apostles for learning, to extend opportunities, and to find the truth. This regard for the educational process implied certain values about students that I think all true educators carry with them. While they are implicit in truly superior educators like my mother, they are explicit in institutions like the University of Guam. Our core values here are identified as a commitment to student success, a respect for global and regional knowledge, a desire to be of service to local and regional communities, and acceptance of the responsibility to enhance the quality of life for learners and the communities that we serve. A university's commitment must to the process of education must be founded on the desire to find the truth and search for justice. When universities think of education in terms of truth and justice, all else is bound to follow. As we bring understanding, a broader understanding, to the role and potential of this particular university, the University of Guam, we must remember who we are and what we can be. Our university has no peer when it fulfills its unique mission in combination with its U.S. accreditation and land-grant status. The university has no equal in the potential to, to meet the demands of island societies facing rapid social and economic change. And I envision an academic community engaged in teaching the next generation of islanders, empowered and ready to take on the economic, educational, and political challenges they will face as leaders. I see an academic community involved in research projects that pursue truth and improve our lives as we deal with complex issues like population growth, urbanization, health care, political status, climate change, and involvement because they see us as indispensable to their own well-being. I see a community of scholars and learners 
engaged in